Hello there. Welcome to Dr. K. Prem Primer Lecture Series. Today we will talk about probe. What is probe? Dictionary meaning is investigating something or examining something. So in molecular biology and RDN technology, probe is very, very common. So hence, uh, we are discussing the probe today in today's lecture. In definition, probe is an oligonucleotide that to single strand labeled with radioactive nucleotides to detect the target molecule in a given sample by hybridization. By hybridization. This is what is called as a probe. As I told you that probe is a single stranded oligonucleotide or fragment of DNA labeled with nucleotide radio, radioactive nucleotides or fluorescent dyes to detect the target DNA or RNA in a given sample through the hybridization. You see the same thing I am try, trying to tell you. This is a probe, it is a single strand oligonucleotide or DNA fragment or RNA fragment which is radio labeled here gamma phosphate is uh, radio labeled the same molecule the same probe identifies the or detect the target DNA target DNA molecule in a given sample through hybridization you see these all all are the different uh, DNA molecules the one probe is going to identify and bind with the target molecule whenever it finds a complementary sequence in this DNA. This probe is binding with the target molecule through the hybridization and it is detecting the, the complementary sequence. This is what is called as a probe. As I told you in the beginning of the lecture, Probe is to examine the or investigating something. Here, by using the probe, whether the similar or its complementary DNA or RNA sequence is present or absent is detected. In addition to the detection of the uh, its complementary DNA in the given sample, it also tells the localization of the particular sequence and also abundance of the particular sequence and also DNA or RNA interaction with the proteins also can be revealed by the probe. So in this lecture, we'll talk about the probe preparation methods, enzymes used in the probes, what are the different labels, labeling sites and finally application of probes we will discuss in this lecture. So at the end of this lecture, you see, I'm going, you are going to answer these four or five questions because you see what is the chemical nature of a probe? It is a protein, RNA or DNA. How, does, how do probes identify the target nucleic acid in a given sample? Name, of, name the enzymes required for piperine phosphate and labeling of probe. Which phosphate of ATP shall be radio labeled to label the piperine phosphate of DNA fragment? Which hybridization technique do you use to identify the DNA in a given sample? My aim is to, my aim is to explain the what is probe in a shortest period. And my aim is also to see that whether you understood or not by ask by answering these questions. I hope with this lecture you can answer these five questions. But only limitation is that you have to go through the entire lecture. Once you go through the entire lecture, you can answer this uh, five simple question and very very important for uh, your uh, competitive exams.
as i told you that in the beginning of uh, lecture an oligonucleotide or fragment of dna or rna is labeled with radioactive nucleotides or fluorescent dyes conjugated with the nucleotides or analog molecules a probe is an oligonucleotide and that to single strand molecule labeled with radioactive nucleotides or fluorescent dyes conjugated with the nucleotides or analog molecules with the other haptens so these that that uh, molecule will identify the target molecule in a given sample by binding to it through the complementary or hybridization that is what is called as a probe as i told you that in this probe in the probe is very very important molecule in the rdna technology and uh, molecular biology in the next slide i will explain the different methods of probe preparation here you see there are six methods through which probes are prepared the very first one is end labeling this is a, what is end labeling and the second one is nick translation third one is random priming and the fourth one is primer extension and the fifth one is polymerase chain reaction and the sixth one is reverse transcription reverse transcription so these are the different methods which are available to prepare the probe different methods for probe preparation so these all methods are depends on the enzyme enzymes only there are enzymatic preparation of probes there is a other way to prepare the probes that is a chemical modification but today we are talking about the enzymatic methods of probes preparation so once again end labeling nick translation random priming primer extinction polymerase chain reaction and reverse transcription in the next slide we will see what are the enzymes which are required for these methods here you see there are six methods or uh, there are through which the probes are prepared the first one is end labeling and the second one is nick translation third one is random priming fourth one is polymerase chain reaction fifth one is reverse transcription and the sixth one is primer extension so i told you that these all methods are enzymatic modification or enzymatic uh, they use the enzyme to prepare the probe for end labeling there are two types of end labeling one is a pipe prime phosphate end labeling this is here you see pipe prime end pipe prime phosphate and the three prime nucleotides of the so when a probe is prepared with the pipe prime phosphate modification when that time two enzymes called as alkaline phosphatase and polynucleotide kinases are used to label the pipe prime phosphate of the dna fragment or rna fragment you need to use the alkaline phosphatase to remove the non uh, non radioactive phos uh, uh, phosphate group and to replace the you need a polynucleotide kinase and there is a second end is 3 prime end where terminal deoxynucleotide transferase is used as a enzyme to label, label the 3 prime end of uh, dna or rna fragments so in end labeling there is a 5 prime phosphate and 3 prime end 5 prime phosphate requires the pipe prime phosphate labeling requires the alkaline phosphatase and uh, polynucleotide kinase on the other hand 3 prime end labeling requires the terminal deoxynucleotide transferase the second method is nick translation nick means make, making a nick means single strand break right so dna is one and polymerase one is required for that method and the random primer priming is requires the clino fragment what is clino fragment clino fragment is the bigger fragment of polymerase dna polymerase one of e coli 
right? And the the next one is polymerase polymerase chain reaction where you require require the TAC polymerase, and the reverse transcription you require the reverse transcriptase, and the primer extension you require the TAC and the clean out fragments. So these are the different methods and the corresponding enzymes to to prepare the probe through which through these methods. In the next slide, we'll we'll uh, see different label molecules. What are the different label molecules are used in the probe preparation? So as I told you that to label the DNA fragment, you require the radioactive nucleotides or fluorescent dyes or hapten molecules, right? Here you see the most uh, popular ones are uh, gamma labeled, gamma labeled P32 ATP is a famous example for uh, piperine phosphate labeling of uh, piperine phosphate labeling. Why gamma phosphate? You see, this is what is a alpha phosphate, beta phosphate, and the gamma phosphate. This gamma phosphate from uh, ATP molecule is transferred to the piperine phosphate. Piperine end of uh, uh, piperine end of DNA fragments. So if a ATP is uh, prepared with the gamma phosphate as the radioactive one, then this is transferred to the depasperylated DNA fragment. Then that becomes the probe. In addition to this one, and this is a uh, only end labeling piperine phosphate labeling is done with the gamma gamma phosphate radioactive p32 that is gamma is used to piperine phosphate labeling and the nick translation means nick translation means what the uh, the provided new labels are involved in the passport ester bond formation so you see nick translation random priming polymerase chain reaction all of them are where labeled nucleotides are involved in the formation of phosphate ester bond bond. So for that, you see alpha phosphate, alpha labeled ATP or other uh, nucleotides are used in this one. These are the two uh, famous uh, radioactive uh, materials for labeling of, uh, of DNA or RNA fragments. In addition to this, there are uh, non-radioactive uh, labels also there. One is uh, you see biotin 11 ATP. This is for uh, RNA probe preparation. And there is uh, another molecule called as a uh, amino allyl UTP ATTO 425. This is also used for the nick translation and other uh, methods. So you can use label as a radioactive nucleotides or uh, fluorescent dyes or uh, hapten molecules, which are later recognized by the conjugated enzymes. In the next slide, we'll see where the label can, whether it is a end labeling or uh, which is a specific or a random one. We can, you don't have choice where exactly radio, uh, you know, label is uh, uh, attached. Here you see labeling sites. We talked about the labels and we are talking about the labeling sites. So labeling sites can be end labeling or random labeling. End labeling is, is five prime phosphate or three prime nucleotides. This is what is called as end labeling. So in other one, second one is random labeling through, through Nick translation or random priming, priming or PCR or RT-PCR through which we can prepare a probe where you don't have a choice where exactly radio labeled or fluorescent dye conjugated molecules are incorporated in the uh, probe. You see in this end labeling, five prime phosphate very specific and the three prime uh, labeling where uh, incorporated all nucleotides are 
at the uh, three prime end there you know uh, this molecule is uh, ready labeled at three prime end when it comes to the random labeling nick translation and random primering pcr rt pcr in this one you provide one of the nucleotide one of the nucleotide is a ready labeled or fluorescent dyes attached so that uh, there is a enzymatic re uh, reaction to incorporate the nucleotides so one of them is incorporated so that will be somewhere in the fragment you see when you synthesize a single strand uh, probe so uh, there is a uh, internally the radioactive or fluorescent uh, labeled uh, nucleotides are involved in the formation of uh, phosphodiester bond or uh, outside so this kind of uh, labeling is called as random labeling this kind of labeling is called as a uh, end or a specific labeling in the next slide we will see what are the uh, uses of the uh, probes so the prepared label uh, the prepared probes are used in the most of the hybridized techniques and they are used in the southern blotting to detect the dna molecule as are they used in the northern blotting to detect the rna and quantification of rna and they are used in the colony hybridization to screen the uh, genomic libraries and they are also used in the fish that's a fluorescent in situ hybridization where you can detect the physical location of the genes in the chromosomes can be uh, done through the fish in that uh, probes are prepared and used and the last one is emsa in addition emsa where uh, dna or rna and protein interactions can be uh, detected and uh, can be quantified using the emsa technique so these are the applications of the probes in the next slide i'm going to give you answers about the previous questions and wait for that in the beginning of the lecture i asked you a few questions around five questions i told you that if you go through this lecture you will uh, you are able to answer those four four or five questions very easily i'm giving you i'm giving you the answers here you see what is the chemical nature of a probe chemical nature of probe is single stranded nucleic acid they may be dna or rna the second question is how do probe uh, detect the target dna target nucleic acid because the probes can uh, can bind with the target dna and hybridize with them so they will have a complementary sequence so that the probe can identify its complementary sequence and hybridizes so that's what is called a hybridization so probe can identify the target dna or rna molecules through the hybridization and third question i asked what are the enzymes required for the 5 prime phosphate labeling so one is uh, alkaline phosphatase and second one is the polynucleated kinase because alkaline phosphatase removes the existing phosphate and polynucleated kinase can add the nucleotide radioactive phosphate to the that uh, dephosphorylated uh, uh, oligonucleotide or dna fragment then uh, the fourth question i asked is uh, which phosphate should be labeled to uh, label to phosphorylate the to phosphorylate the pi prime ends so gamma phosphate if it is a, that is ready labeled then the radio labeled gamma phosphate is transferred to the probe then probe is labeled and i told i asked you what is the you know which uh, hybridization technique used to detect the dna that's nothing but southern blotting so this is all about the probe introduction if at all you like it subscribe for uh, regular updates thank you all for watching if at all you like it if you don't like it also if you don't like uh, just tell me where you don't like so that we will improve to uh, give good content thank you all see you again with one more video until then bye bye